Oh, look at that. That is horrendous. Hello and welcome to Classic Football Shirts HQ. My name is Ellis and today we're going to be talking about the worst football shirts of all time. At the very best, football shirts can be amazing and you never want to take them off. But they're worst. Also worth noting before we get into this, these opinions are mine, they're not that of classic football shirts, this is completely subjective. Some people love shirts, you, you might love this, but for example, I don't. For me, this is one of the most overrated shirts of all time. Everyone always says that this is Arsenal's best shirt, and for value it is, I just don't think it's very nice. Why does everyone think a bruised banana is nice? You see a bruised banana, you don't eat it. Why would you want a bruised banana? Nobody likes the bruised bananas. And I'm in that category with this shirt. I just really don't like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Onto the other side of North London. This has always been quite highly sought after. It is what Spurs wore mainly in the UEFA Cup that season. It's always been very rare, but who signed off on the color brown? No one ever leaves a design meeting and goes, you're not brown. I don't really get why Puma signed off with brown. And I keep saying the word brown because when you look at it, just it's the only word that comes to your mind, isn't it? It's just brown. The 12-13 season was one of huge promise for Liverpool. The Liverbird logo was finally back on their shirts. Things were looking up. However, this shirt is what came to fruition and it is an absolute stinker. They ended up finishing seventh in the league and I'm surprised to find out that wasn't because they had a 15 point deduction for having a horrible shirt. This shirt is an absolute shambles. To be honest, every shirt from that season for Liverpool is a bit of a shambles, but this one just stands out massively. It's got the purple on there as a sort of throwback to David James's 90s goalkeeper shirts, but even still, it doesn't recover it. It is awful. <laughs> USA 94 was an absolutely iconic tournament. It was the first World Cup hosted in North America and everything to do with the tournament was massive on a global scale. Diana Ross missed a penalty, for example. However, this shirt looks like someone has got a denim jacket, sewed it together and drawn some stars on it. That is ultimately what this shirt is. I see people always say, oh, it's one of the best of all time. Why? Why is it? It's not great. It's overrated. <laughs> The 97-98 FC Porto shirts are very Jekyll and Hyde in my opinion. The home shirt is the best football shirt of all time, in my opinion, and the away shirt isn't great. There's a dragon on it, which would look all right if it wasn't on an orange background. And I understand this shirt is very iconic for FC Porto. It was the shirt that was synonymous with their Penta win, which is the five Portuguese championships in a row, which has never been replicated by another Portuguese team. However, in my opinion, the shirt is just too much going on on an orange background. Euro 96 was a watershed moment for both England in football and the country as a whole. Before the tournament, the whole country was very divided. There was riots, but the tournament brought the entire country together and it was all towards this shirt. We all came together to say, this is ugly. And to be honest, it's no shock we didn't win a penalty shootout for 20 odd years after the Spain win because this shirt cursed it. Everything to do with this shirt was some voodoo that implemented onto us and made us not able to win. It's bad. It's very bad. It's really, really bad. <laughs> Don't hate me, please, Celtic fans. I think we can all agree that this shirt is just an abomination. Although it's obviously very iconic, it's the shirt that Celtic wore in the season to stop Rangers from winning 10 SPL titles in a row. However, it's designed off a of bumblebee. It's been coined the bumblebee design. Bumblebees and football, they do not mix. I'll give it credit, it does actually mimic a bumblebee very well, but that's never a design that was gonna correlate well to a football shirt. No one looks at a football shirt and thinks, you know what that needs? A bumblebee. This looks a bit like a drumstick lolly has melted onto a football shirt and they've just thought, actually, you know what? We don't need to design one now, we'll just do this. The 98 playoff final is one of the most rewatchable finals of all time. It's absolute carnage, that game. It's a shame you can't watch it, though, without seeing this absolute eyesore on screen. It's supposed to be gold. It looks more like mustard. There's no redeeming feature on here. The only slight, tiny positive you could say is the sponsor looks quite nice. But other than that, the shirt's just awful. There's no nicety here. It's a shambles. <laughs> The 09-10 season is one that Newcastle fans wanted to forget in a hurry. A year in the championship where they felt they didn't belong and then they bounced back. However, you're never going to forget it because you released one of the worst football shirts of all time. It's actually famous for having the worst kit launch ever. Only two fans queued up for it. And that's too, too many in my opinion. It's very yellow, it's very ugly, and no wonder you lost in a friendly 6-1 to Leighton Orient in it because 
It's a shambles. You deserve to lose. I think the promotion should have been rescinded for it. Okay, so all video I've been wearing this prawn shirt, so I had to mention some food related shirts. Why did they exist and why are they here? They are just awful. We've got a pepper shirt, shambles, broccoli shirt, stinker, and there's a ham shirt, which is just even worse than the others. How is that possible? They're awful. Mm -hmm.